It's November the 12th, 1966, and in a graveyard in West Virginia, it's a cold night, and the men go about their somber work. The men are used to feeling a cold, icy shiver down their spine. Who wouldn't, under the same circumstances? But none let that stop them, and they keep their spirits up in the cold still of the night. The wind rustles. You scared me, man. There's a whoosh. And was that a flap of wings? The men stopped their work for a moment. What's that? There's something there. Look over by the trees. Something seemed to be jumping from tree to tree inside the graveyard. Something huge. Something not human. There's a whoosh as mighty wings flap and the man-shaped creature flies over their heads and disappears. One of the grave diggers later described it as a brown human being with incredible speed. Three days later, on the night of November the 15th, 1966, in Point Pleasant, West Virginia, two young couples are driving in a car at around midnight. They're out near the abandoned West Virginia Ordnance Works. It's a spooky and desolate place. Old World War II bunkers and abandoned laboratories have started to fall into disrepair, and nature is beginning to reclaim the polluted site that locals call the TNT area. It's a vast area with almost a hundred large concrete domes built into the ground to store explosives without being spotted from the air. Over 3,500 people worked there during 1942 to 1945, but now there's no one, just four young people in a car, driving along, having fun. Stephen Mary Millette and Roger and Linda Scarberry. Stop it. The car headlights pick up shadows in the road ahead. In the rearview mirror, there's two red lights. Strange, as they didn't pass a car, no matter, they drive on. Then, something untowards is in front of them. Some thing. The headlights illuminate the terrifying apparition they see before them. Standing there is a man, a huge man. But it's not just the size. This man has wings, massive wings. 10 feet were over three meters wide. Malek said, it was like a man with wings. It wasn't like anything you'd see on TV or in a monster movie. Staring back at them, the creature had terrifying, huge, glowing red eyes, two inches wide and six inches apart. Oh, no. Get away. Oh, God, God, God. Roger Scarberry said, I'm a hard man to scare, but I was getting out of there. They quickly drove on to Route 62. The creature was huge, but it was not to be judged by its size. Size matters not. This creature was fast, supernaturally fast. It seemed to move 100 miles an hour. Taking off, it pursued the car, overtook and landed in front. While on its muscular legs, it seemed to lumber awkwardly, but on the wing, it easily overtook the car. Linda yelled at Roger to drive faster and they thought they had lost it. Questioning as to what they had really seen, had they spooked themselves after seeing something perfectly natural? Maybe it was just an owl. Rounding a bend, they passed a billboard on top of the hill. They weren't mistaken. There, on top of the billboard, was the winged man with glowing red eyes, the moth man. The huge creature spread its mighty wings and shot at great speed up vertically into the air. The occupants of the car were terrified, pushing the car faster, screaming, the Mothman in pursuit. It seemed to be chasing the car, all the while weaving left and right over the tail end. They couldn't escape. Roger floored the gas pedal. 70 miles an hour, 80 miles an hour, 90, 100 miles an hour. The Mothman kept up flying left and right the wings seemed to scrape on the top of the car, making screeching noises as they raked the roof. The occupants were naturally rather perturbed. 
As the car reached Point Pleasant, the creature thankfully veered off. The group, grateful to be free of the monster and no longer alone, went to the local dairy land. They argued about what to do next, go to the police. The young women no way, agreed that it was the right thing to do. They had to report it. The men, however, were a little more concerned with how that might look. They would be a laughing stock. Maybe if they could check if it was still there and then show the police the creature, well, that would be okay. The four climbed back into the car and set back along the road from where they had just came. They saw ahead what looked like a dead dog on the road. Then suddenly, it was there again. The Mothman lumbered out of the undergrowth in front of the car and took off and flew over the top of the car and into the field. The dead dog was gone. That was it. This time, they were going to the police no matter how stupid they were going to look. The police would just have to believe them. They parked at a diner and called the police. It was late and thinking it was just a prank or young people under the influence of something, Deputy Millard Halstead reluctantly arrived on the scene. The group relayed their night of terror to the deputy and the strange story of the muscular, abnormally huge winged man with supernatural speed. Halstead was a rational man he wasn't going to believe their story as it was told, but something had spooked the four of them. They were obviously terrified, and he knew these people. They weren't your typical troublemakers. This was going to have to be investigated. The two cars drove back out towards the TNT area to see what they could find. Getting out of his car, the first thing the deputy noticed was that his radio was playing up. Static made it inoperable. Static and weird noises. The four young people stayed in their car, watching as the deputy shone his flashlight around the place. They swore they could see shadows dancing around the deputy. A cloud of dust from a coal yard was spotted by the couples and the deputy, like something huge had taken flight. But other than that, there was nothing. The deputy returned to the station and filed a report. The four young people spent the rest of the night together with the lights on. The following day, the police held a press conference to discuss the sightings. Some of the press named the creature Mothman. In the 1960s, superheroes were becoming part of the culture and Batman had just appeared as a TV series. So maybe Mothman was a real life superhero the Point Pleasant Register ran the story with the headline, Couples See Man-Sized Bird, Creature, Something. In an interview, Steve Mallett said, We understand people are laughing at us, but we couldn't make up all this to make us look like fools. Fortified by the daylight, the four of them went back to the TNT area, maybe to find some proof that they weren't the local fools. Walking around the site, they found strange tracks. Exploring the site further, they found an old boiler. Steve forced a door open. As he did so, something huge emerged and flew up into the air, kicking up dust as it went. The four fled the scene. In the following three days, there were eight more sightings by various people. Firefighters saw it. A man named Newell Partridge noticed buzzing and static on his television. And went outside with his German Shepherd. There, he spotted the Mothman in his flashlight. His dog went missing, never to return. The Mothman has been seen repeatedly since that time in many places around the world. Some believe its presence prophesizes disaster or tragedy. That was certainly the case in Point Pleasant, where the Silver Bridge collapsed in 1967, sending 46 people to their doom. Every year, Point Pleasant celebrates the phenomenon and holds a Mothman festival that you can attend. There's a Mothman museum and a huge chrome statue of the strange creature that fascinates and terrorizes even today.
Let us know in the comments what you think the Mothman is, or even if you have seen him. Please like and subscribe to our new channel. Thank you.